Chapter 30 You shall make an altar to burn incense on. You shall make it of acacia wood. Its length shall be a cubit, and its breadth a cubit. It shall be square, and its height shall be two cubits. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, the top of it, the sides of it round it, and its horns, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall make two golden rings for it under its molding, on its two ribs. On its two sides you shall make them, and they shall be for places for poles with which to bear it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn incense of sweet spices on it every morning. When he tends the lamps, he shall burn it. When Aaron lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense on it, nor burnt offering, nor meal offering, and you shall pour no drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once in the year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once in the year he shall make atonement for it throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you take a census of the children of Israel, according to those who are numbered among them, then each man shall give a ransom for his soul to the Lord, when you number him, that there be no plague among them when you number them. They shall give this, every one who passes over to those who are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty geras. Half a shekel for an offering to the Lord. Every one who passes over to those who are numbered, from twenty years old and upward, shall give the offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel, when they give the offering of the Lord, to make atonement for your souls. You shall take the atonement money from the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord, to make atonement for your souls. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a basin of brass, and the base of it of brass, in which to wash. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet in it. When they go into the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water that they not die, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his descendants throughout their generations. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also take fine spices, of liquid myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of fragrant cinnamon half as much, even two hundred and fifty, and of fragrant cane two hundred and fifty, and of cassia five hundred, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. You shall make it a holy anointing oil, a perfume, compounded after the art of the perfumer it shall be, a holy anointing oil. You shall use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the table in all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils, and the basin with its base. You shall sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them shall be holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and sanctify them, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, neither shall you make any like it. According to its composition, it is holy. It shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on a stranger, he shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take to yourself sweet spices, gum resin, and onkya, and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense. Of each shall there be an equal weight, and you shall make incense of it, a perfume after the art of the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. And you shall beat some of it very small, and put some of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be to you most holy. The incense which you shall make, according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be to you holy for the Lord. 
Whoever shall make any like that to smell of it, he shall be cut off from his people. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither did this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God might be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, anointed the blind man's eyes with the mud, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went away, washed, and came back seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and those who saw that he was blind before, said, Isn't this he who sat and begged? Others were saying, It is he. Still others were saying, He looks like him. He said, I am he. They, therefore, were asking him, How were your eyes opened? He answered, A man called Jesus made mud, anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed, and I received sight. Then they asked him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him who had been blind to the Pharisees. It was a Sabbath when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Again, therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. I washed and I see. Some, therefore, of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. Therefore they asked the blind man again, What do you say about him, because he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews, therefore, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we don't know, or who opened his eyes we don't know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if any man would confess him as Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So they called the man who was blind a second time and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He therefore answered, I don't know if he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't also want to become his disciples, do you? They insulted him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered them, How amazing! You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he listens to him. Since the world began, it has never been heard of that anyone opened the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were all together born in sins, and do you teach us? They threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who speaks with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, that those who don't see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remains.
Proverbs chapter 6. My son, if you have become collateral for your neighbor, if you have struck your hands in pledge for a stranger, you are trapped by the words of your mouth, you are ensnared with the words of your mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver yourself, seeing you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go, humble yourself, press your plea with your neighbor, give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no chief, overseer, or ruler, provides her bread in the summer, and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you sleep, sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So your poverty will come as a robber, and your scarcity as an armed man. A worthless person, a man of iniquity, is he who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who motions with his fingers, in whose heart is perverseness, who devises evil continually, who always sows discord. Therefore his calamity will come suddenly. He will be broken suddenly in that without remedy. There are six things which Yahweh hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness who utters lies, and he who sows discord among brothers. My son, keep your father's commandment, and don't forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them continually on your heart, tie them around your neck. When you walk, it will lead you. When you sleep, it will watch over you. When you awake, it will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep you from the immoral woman, from the flattery of the wayward wife's tongue. Don't lust after her beauty in your heart, neither let her captivate you with her eyelids. For a prostitute reduces you to a piece of bread, the adulteress hunts for your precious life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap, and his clothes not be burned? Or can one walk on hot coals, and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not be unpunished. Men don't despise a thief, if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But if he is found, he shall restore seven times. He shall give all the wealth of his house. He who commits adultery with a woman is void of understanding. He who does it destroys his own soul. He will get wounds and dishonor. His reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy arouses the fury of the husband. He won't spare in the day of vengeance. He won't regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though you give many gifts. Stand firm, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and don't be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, tell you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will profit you nothing. Yes, I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is a debtor to do the whole law. You are alienated from Christ, you who desire to be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision amounts to anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith working through love. You were running well. Who interfered with you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little yeast grows through the whole lump. I have confidence toward you in the Lord that you will think no other way, but he who troubles you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. But I, brothers, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been removed. I wish that those who disturb you would cut themselves off. For you, brothers, were called for freedom. Only don't use your freedom for gain to the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. In this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you don't consume one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, that you may not do the things that you desire. 
but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, which are adultery, sexual immorality, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousies, outbursts of anger, rivalries, divisions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, even as I also forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lust. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. <laughs> 